Hey guys, wanted to make a quick video uh, going over the break-in procedure on the M1000RR and why it's so important. Now the M1000RR is different than the S1000RR because it only has two piston rings. Um, that's what makes the break-in procedure so much more important on this bike. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, I've had three customers um, message me, I'm sorry, not customers yet, but they're potential customers and they have bone stock S1000RRs no flash, no modifications, and they're smoking and burning oil. Now that's a sign of a bad break-in procedure, meaning it's not broken in properly. There's oil getting from the bottom of the crankcase up into the combustion chamber and then being burned and shot out the exhaust, which is bad. That's not good. Um, you want a proper seating from the pistons to the engine. And the only way to do that is do a proper break-in procedure. So I'll go over this with you guys. Um, now the break-in procedure itself, the way I do it, and while there's no universal agreed upon method to break on uh, break in an engine, what is agreed upon is that the engine needs to be broken in properly, meaning the pistons need to be seating with the engine, the valve train, everything else needs to be seated properly, bearings and everything properly with the engine. The most important thing being the piston rings. Piston rings are that much more important because if you're burning oil at the exhaust, now you're having detonation in the engine because oil in the combustion chamber lowers the octane level. Not only that, but if the oil is getting into the combustion chamber, that means the fuel is getting into the oil. So if the fuel is getting into the oil, a good indicator of a bad break-in procedure is kind of the oil starting to blacken very fast, get contaminants in it, and lower, meaning um, you're not gonna have as much oil level as you did you know, when you first got the bike. It should be right in the middle type of deal, right when you first buy the bike. If it's at the very bottom of this gauge or not even visible on the gauge, yeah, you have a problem with bulk oil consumption. Um, you probably look at your exhaust and it's probably like completely black, like disgusting. I've had videos of a customer sending me one that was completely black. Let's put it that way. When he ran his finger over and said, what's wrong with this? Um, and let's see my oil here. I'm going to stand the bike up here. And if it falls, it's even better for a video. So you can see right there, the oil is nice and clear. It's up to level. It's exactly where it should be. This is at 200 miles after my first break in uh, service on the motorcycle. So that's good. So the way I break in a motorcycle here is I bring the bike up to operating temp. Well, first I buy it, of course, and I tell the dealer, uh, don't ride it. Um, I'll do all the riding. So they have to, you know, PDI it or whatever they got to do. And that's probably like two miles or something like that. So I got my, my bike with two miles on it. Um, and that's just for them to make sure the bike doesn't fall apart, you know, when you, <laughs> when you ride it. So they got to make sure they do something there. Um, I let it idle for 15 minutes. Um, that's just sitting there idling, waiting for it to get to operating temp. Now, if the coolant reads operating temp, do not ride the bike. Wait for about 15 minutes because the oil is the actual indicator of operating temp, not the coolant in the situation. So let the oil get the temp, which is about 15 minutes. And then within the first 20 to 30 miles, you wanna make sure you beat up the bike. When I say beat up the bike, don't actually physically beat it up. That means what I do is I take it to about third or fourth gear, um, about 3,000 RPMs, give it a good pull, 100% throttle, all the way to the limiter at 9,000 RPM, which is the break-in limiter on this bike, and then let go of the throttle and let it engine brake all the way down back to two to 3,000 RPM again, and repeat that procedure. And of course, you can vary loads. So if you wanna do 50%, 75%, um, and then get to 100%, you can do it that way. I just do 100%, uh, basically the 100% let it off, 100% let it off, like that kind of thing if you can. Um, of course, it's not bad to of course go 50%, 25%. There's really no universal method that's agreed upon with exactly how to do it. The whole point is, is varying RPMs, varying loads, that is important. Um, and of course, yes, the RPM limiter on this is about 9,000 stocks. So you cannot wrap it all the way up to 15,000. After the first service, I went and did the 15,000 uh, RPM break in, even though the bike was already at 600 miles, I still did it anyway. And the bike's running amazing. Um, I don't know if that helped or not. Couldn't tell you because the bike's already at 600 miles or was at 600 miles at that point. Now I think it's at 800 or so miles. Um, but yeah, that worked for me. My bike's not burning oil. It's feeling great. In fact, the bike felt pretty soft up until about, I'd say about 50 miles maybe or so. Then the bike started feeling like the power was coming on. I almost, it almost felt broken for the first like 10 miles or so. Like there was no power in this motorcycle whatsoever. Now it feels 
very good. Let's put it that way, especially with the tuning on it, it feels great. So I just wanted to kind of go over with you guys how important that break-in procedure is. And uh, on the M1000R especially, because now I'm having customers, uh, sorry, not customers, but people PM me um, and tell me, hey, why is my bike smoking? Can you help me? So that's why your bike is smoking. Make sure you don't use this bike for just coffee runs. You wanna make sure you break it in right. You won't, this is a race engine. This is basically the definition of a race engine right here that's sold on the street. So you wanna make sure you treat it like a race engine and break it in like a race engine.